talked about the bubble and whether or not you go, but if you were a player, would you play? Uh, in the in the NBA bubble, yes. Uh, if there was any sport that I would play in, it would be the NBA bubble because uh, number one, there's no 100. Um, percent I've actually I'm I was asked would I by Bleacher Report would I go in the bubble uh, to cover it, and I said yes. Uh, and so uh, one, there's a there's a work element to it. Um, I, this is what I do. This is what they do. And uh, the precautions that are be ta- being taken, I mean, let's, let's be honest, with everything that the NBA has at stake, going down there and playing uh, is probably the safest place that you're possibly going to be uh, as far as the people around you all being committed to the same thing. I don't know that there's any place, even living out here in California, where I can guarantee that everybody is of like mind in taking the utmost precautions. Now, there's always that human behavior question as to whether everybody is going to take it seriously, but for what's at stake and what the, and the measures that the NBA is taking, I would expect that the bubble is actually going to be the best place that I could be if I'm worried about getting COVID-19. I, I believe the same thing with college athletes, to be honest, because the, the medical care that you will get, the attention to detail, the availability of tests is much greater mm-hmm. there. And it's not like you're in a bubble at home anymore, right? Un- unless they right. go back, and I don't think they're going to, knock wood, to the stay-at-home orders and to quarantine it's not like you're coming from a sterile environment and going into the bubble or in major league baseball. Like I just, I, I think people are looking at this, at this all wrong. Um, what, what's the real, like the Avery Bradley thing's weird. Okay. Right. Cause he was mm-hmm. part of the coalition with K, uh, with Kyrie Irving talking about the need to maintain a focus on social justice, not on playing. And then, and then he hit us with the, Hey, I got a six year old kid who can't come to the bubble. Um, it feels like he put the family thing out there so no one will question him. Yeah, and I don't know. I I I I don't know enough to to question what his motive is and why it came up as it did. So I'm going to take him at his word. Clearly, from the very beginning, Avery was conflicted about coming back and playing. And uh, and and I this is what I do appreciate about what. Avery and, and, and how he has approached this, or at least how he did at the beginning, which was, if we're going to come back and play, let us utilize this as leverage for things that are going to address social justice. And, and, and for me, that leverage is not, we can put things on the back of our jerseys. That, I, that feels like such an okie doke to me. Totally. And it's not something that Avery, Avery talked about. He, he looked for, like real systemic change, creating, uh, creating opportunities and, uh, and, and structural empowerment for minorities. That, to me, is what's going to change something, not the back of Jersey. Even to the point of, you know, it was brought up to me today, which I thought was a, a, great, uh, a great thing brought up by a, a GM I was talking to. If, you, if, you, if you're the Players Association... You should be asking, okay, so the league is spending about a hundred million dollars in this uh, to create this bubble. How much of that is going to minority owned businesses? Are you using minority owned busing uh, companies? Are you using uh, minority owned catering services? If you really wanted to kind of shift the dynamic, uh, that to me is a real shift. Changing, you know, putting slogans on the back of jerseys just seems to me like, okay, it's it's a little bit like the four guys standing up at the ESPYs. It looks nice. It sounds nice. Doesn't do anything. But ultimately, it's not creating the change that I believe is, See, is necessary. See, and, and I, I will be honest with you. I think the putting the putting a slogan on the back of jerseys is a massive mistake because are you going to limit, limit it, right? Because yeah, are, are you, you have to, right? Well, I mean, are you allowed to put Trump to 2020? What if, what if you thought that, I mean, like, I don't believe anyone would. Okay. Yeah. But the idea that you, yeah. you couldn't do it without getting shouted down. Yeah. Um, or yeah. In either direction. In either, in direction. either direction. Either to this yeah. idea of, it's like, it's not really free speech. 
it's only free no. speech if you agree with with majority of people who think that way, right? And it's that's not right. the the idea. You're right. And, and look, this has been my thing with you know the, whether it's the Dixie Chicks changing their name or something else was which changed over the weekend, which felt felt like again. I don't know if Okie Doke is a great great way. It's like look, it it should be about. It should be about giving people a better shot at education to, to feel like they got a better shot at education, at, at safe, at living, living in a safe community where their kids can go to school, where their property values go up and they feel like they get a fair shot from the police officers, from the government to where we all do feel like we're at somewhat of the, of the same level. And, and, and I, and, and then the limitations on the supposed free speech strike me as, as, as a little bit, uh, a little bit far from what the actual uh, exercise is supposed to be. Rick Buecher joining us uh, on the Doug Gottlieb Show on Fox Sports Radio. Okay, um, the the Knicks job. They've interviewed a bunch of people. Supposedly, yep. supposedly, um, uh, you know, they, they had one guy in mind. And yep. is that the guy who's getting the job? Yeah, I would fully expect that it's still Tom Thibodeau's job to lose. And is it that, Thibodeau or Thibodeau? Because he's known as Tibbs. Tibbs. Everybody says Tibbs, yeah. but yeah, it's spelled it's with Tibbs. a T-H. So are we doing no, the silent H thing? Yeah. yeah. It's Tibbs, but the full name is actually Thibodeau. But is it is it is it Thibodeau and they just don't pronounce the H? Much like Brett Favre, where we screw up the thing totally. Is no, it really it's Thibodeau? It's it's really Thibodeau. Then why isn't it Thibbs? Because that's a little it just sounds funky. Tibbs is easier. But his name is okay. You know what this is like. This Look, is you know what this is you're like. You're asking me to. You're, you're actually asking me to get into like human psychology. No, no, no listen. I can't. I can't. Uh, you ever you ever been to Louisville? Yes. Okay. So, Louisville. To anybody from Louisville, they say Louisville, Louisville, yeah. right? That's how they say it, right? I, I grew up in Cincinnati. Okay, so Louisville. It's like V U Cincinnati. 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 People. But but it's but <laughs> yeah, Cincinnati. But it's called the Natty. Wait, wait. Yeah. And then it's <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> Only they call it the Ville. I don't get it. I don't. I don't under. I don't understand. Okay, um, like I like Tibbs. Yeah. Um, and obviously he got a lot out of the guys in Chicago. It didn't mm-hmm. work in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. What? Wh- why is it a relationship with Leon Rose? Why is he the guy with the Knicks? I would say it's a combination. Number one, the idea that they need somebody who is. Uh, is going to – they have a young roster. They'd like to see more discipline in that roster. Uh, you know, this is always the yin and the yang. You have a player's coach, and then you're going to have the disciplinarian, and then you go back to the player's coach and you swing back and forth. With a young roster, the feeling is, is, is that, uh, that, that they need somebody who is going to uh, mold and cultivate these guys, and, and the Tibbs is the guy to do that among all the candidates out there, that he is the guy – uh, to do that. But it really, you know, number one is it's the relationship uh, represented by CAA. They just announced that Worldwide West is now going to be an official part of the Knicks. He was always going to be a part of the Knicks, just a matter of whether it's going to be official or unofficial. And actually, I'm kind of surprised that they, they that, that they're putting a nameplate on him because now he, he's under the jurisdiction of the league, which uh, worldwide has always worked better in, in, in the margins in terms of, of what he does. It's facilitating things nonetheless look don't forget leon's never been an executive before he's never been on this side of the equation and so it's going to be paramount for him to be uh to have somebody with him that he trusts and that he knows and feels like is on the same team and certainly he has that more so in tibbs than he does in anybody else. Now, I, I believe that they're going through all of these interviews because much like when anybody comes into a job for the first time or an, an arena for the first time, they want to learn as much as they can. So this gives them an opportunity to pick a lot of brains that they normally would not be able to pick. Right? Uh, why not have Mike Brown come in and find out exactly how the Warriors operate and maybe steal a few ideas to incorporate into the Knicks system. It's, it's, a, it's a smart idea, but from everything that I'm hearing, and I, I wanted to bring this up just because the last time you and I spoke about this, I didn't know whether 
They were interviewing all these guys because it was a question of is Tibbs still the guy or, uh, or, or whether it was this fact-finding mission. And I've since found out that it is the former, not the latter, that uh, I would still expect uh, sometime later th- uh, in uh, mid to late July that we're going to get an announcement that Tom Tom Thibodeau is the next head coach of the New York Knicks. It is fascinating, right? You got Arn running the Detroit Pistons, right? And then, yep. And, yep. and you have you know Golden State run by an age, a former agent as well, Bob Myers. You know Bob yep. Myers. The Lakers are uh, are Palinka, and now Leon Rose. Like obviously, this is very, very much, uh, very, very much a trend. You start, you know, the Clippers yeah. have functioned quite well uh, with Lawrence Frank, who's of course a former head coach uh, running mm-hmm. their organization. It's just it, it's interesting, like. Who, I mean, um, I, I guess the question becomes like, you know, Leon Rose, Clutch Sports, and those guys were with CAA. Then they went to UTA. Like, mm-hmm. are, are they? Are we going to see cross pollination? Right, because we've seen players leaving for Clutch Sports, and there are players that are CAA guys. I wonder if they'll be, if we're going to have all agent represented teams at at any point in time. Yeah, I don't. I I feel like it a trend and not all of these are created equal. Uh, obviously Bob Myers at least had the apprenticeship of working under Jerry West for a while. Uh, I, I think Rob Palinka has done more than people expected him to do and had more success in, in patching together a roster, but it, it's when you have LeBron James and then you got to go out and you got to find pieces to put around him that's a starkly different responsibility and task than say Leon Rose has with the New York Knicks and, uh, or that for that matter of what, what Arn has with the Detroit Pistons now is, is they're, they're in a very uh, interesting position. And I, I, I just, I don't, uh, the, the other part is, is that you can have these guys named as team president or in these positions but are they really making all of the decisions? Uh, how much input are they getting? How what what's the rest of their staff look like? It's uh, it's one of the things where I give the the Chicago Bulls a ton of credit in their makeover because they didn't just uh, hire Arturis. They hired Mark Eversley. They hired a couple of assistant GMs. Right. They're taking a look at like how much internal. Uh, brain power can we create as opposed to just going out and getting that one big name? The best franchises now are run because they have a depth of input, not because they have that one genius at the top of the uh, at the top of the masthead. Um, best guess, Lou Williams going to make make the trip? Uh, I would say yes. I would say ultimately that between Doc and uh, Doc has a great relationship with him. So I would think that, that, yeah, it, it's, it, Lou is, it, is one of those guys though, that I thought was the first guy I thought, is he really going to want to do this? Um, Cause it, Doc will tell you like there, there's one guy, anytime there's a, a, a voluntary practice or should we practice? Should we not practice? Lou's always, no, we're good. We don't need, <laughs> we don't need to smell the gym. Um, so I think this is some of that, but the opportunity to win a ring, even in this unique circumstance and the relationship, uh, I just think Paul George, Kawhi and Doc are going to be able to convince Lou, look, we need you along for the ride. Let's get this done. Come join us. Awesome stuff. Buke. Great Intel. Thanks so much for joining us and uh, we'll catch up soon.